Who would win? Seven years of making music or two YouTube tutorials. For real though, thank you for 700 subs. It means a lot. Hey guys, it's I've Been Dubbed. Let's mix a freaking banger. How to drum. Virtual Riot sample, because I'm not original, is my name I've been original? No, it's I've been dubbed, so we're using the Virtual Riot sample. How do I mix it? Add some bass in the upper register. Get rid of some mud around 400 hertz. Add an expander to make it go. Add a soft clipper to make that sh loud. Same thing with the snare. Hi-hats, because you gotta add that groove. One thing that is important here though is that this EQ is making room for the hi-hats in the mix while making all the elements that are not the hi-hats fit. For example, with the EQ off, with the EQ on, it just adds some room. Gotta have some percussion to add more room and space and etc. And now the part you actually care about, the thing that goes... I made this from a preset by Cyclops. I don't remember if I changed up the preset or just slapped it on there. But either way, without any effects, it sounds like this. That's not beefy and or juicy. You know, the words that people use to describe dubstep wubs, apparently. So what I did to beef it up is this. Put it through a whole bunch of OTTs and a sound good -izer. More accurately, I downloaded a mixer preset from Soundkiller on YouTube and I copied Virtual Riot's Fat Rack. Am I original? No. But I'll remind you again, you're not watching the official YouTube channel of I've Been Original. Also, I want to point out the fact that I have two sausage fatteners on this. But in all seriousness, there are some important things to point out. So this EQ curve is used to get rid of harshness. It's really useful to have an EQ with a built-in spectrum analyzer because you can take away the frequencies that look out of place. This part's important too. I cut some of the high end to make room for the hi-hats, and I cut the low end to make room for the sub-bass around 130 Hz. For the sub-bass, I have a sine wave with a pitch bend, so it adds some punch. And I added some distortion to fill out the mix, as well as an EQ curve to make sure the distortion doesn't go too far up the spectrum. And to add more volume, I added a camel crusher at the end. There's nothing too special about the horns other than that. I used one sample for the initial hit, and then I used another sample to just sustain the sound. Because if I used the first sample, it would have been kind of weird because it was so up front and the second sample sits in the back so it doesn't overpower the whole image of the sound. I made this part more interesting by adding a bell that fades out while an arp fades in to add some variation. And then there's white noise, whooshy effect things that everyone uses. For the sidechain, I actually have two plugins just doing the same thing, really. Um, we have two shaper boxes, and you can see that it's ducking the sound at different frequencies at different times. And for instance, I have the low band ducking longer than the mids and the highs because it's much more noticeable when the high band is ducked than the low band, so it makes sense to make the low band duck harder than the mids and the highs. And to trigger the sidechain, I have everything routed to a sidechain channel that's not a kick or a snare. I also have a quick sidechain channel for all the elements that need to duck for a shorter amount of time to maintain groove, like hi-hats. The main way I go about mixing is making sure that all the elements have their own space and what I mean by that is that each element should be panned a certain way 
or further back or up front in the mix using reverb and especially EQ can help place objects where they need to be. For example, I made this mid bass seem up front and in the center of the mix by not panning it, adding reverb, or adding stereo information, so it gives the sound its own space compared to the rest of the elements. And so since we have an element in the center of the mix, adding elements on the left and the right can fill it out, so added percussion to do just that. And then when you add in hi-hats and sub bass to fill in the rest of the frequencies, you can see how adding contrasting elements in a mix can fill it out. This was a very basic overview of how I mix. If you guys want me to go into detail about different aspects and techniques, leave a comment down below and I'll do it. If this video helped you out, leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. Catch you guys later.